Hello and welcome back to Beyond Blender. Today we're going to be making this awesome hammer. Uh, it's a sketch that I initially made, which I'll be sharing with you, and you can download that in the uh, link in the description. Um, we'll start off by breaking down the hammer into, se into sections. So we'll start off with the head and uh, work our way down from there. So there's the sketch. As I say, you can download that, the link's in the description. And what we're going to do is we're going to like as I'm showing there, just uh, break it down into different sections, make it a lot easier to model, so it's not too complicated. So I imagine, I like to think that this can be used by, you know, it can be made with, uh, even if you're a beginner in Blender, just take it easy, one step at a time, and you'll, and you'll definitely get there. Now, you will need some uh, add-ons for this, which are built into Blender by default. So just head over to Edit Preferences, and search for um, Loop Tools, and Node Wrangler, and extra objects just like that and tick the boxes and make sure that your preferences are saved which you can do in the bottom left hand corner icon there and that's it that's simple so what we'll do now is we'll bring in the the image as a reference image you can also drag it into your viewport that also works and we'll just load that in and of course it's facing at the angle and rotation of where we were looking through the viewport. So we'll have to reset the location and the rotation of that, which you can do through the side menu just there. Here, just click and drag and type in zero. But of course we want it rotated on the x-axis, which is the, the red one. So we'll type in 90 there, so it's facing the right way. And we just need to position it. Um, a little bit further up and so it's sitting on, on the world really, on, on the red line. And center it along the handle. Now if you go into the reference image properties, just turn, the, turn on the opacity and turn that value down so you can see through it. Just makes it a lot easier when you're modeling. And you don't want it in perspective view, so we'll turn that off in a second. And you want it for uh, the depth you want set to back so it's always viewed behind the objects and you want the side views to be front and back so tick on both and turn off perspective there we go you can flip the uh, the angle the view by the way by pressing control then the corresponding number on the numpad I'm just going to turn this on because I like to do turn off the um, the ability to select some objects. I don't really want to select the reference image, so just to toggle that off. Now I can't select the reference image by accident. So let's start off with the top of the hammer. Um, we're going to just work with the default cube, or add a cube, and uh, we'll just edit this one to roughly the proportions of the, uh, the square block you see in the head there. Now, as I'm doing this, it's important to note that I'm doing this in object mode, so that's not always advisable, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, do make sure you apply the scale of your model through the menu or by clicking uh, the key combo, which is Control and A. There you go, and you can just apply the scale, and now your values are set to 1, 1, 1. Good stuff, let's, let's head on, let's continue. Um, switch to wireframe mode and uh, it's probably easier to use a mirror modifier for this um, simply because most of the hammer is symmetrical across the x-axis so what I'll do is I'll use the uh, the menu there to add a loop cut which is also um, you can do that by pressing ctrl R once we've done that we'll select the, the faces on one side of the, uh, the cube and press delete and delete those faces so now we're just left with the one side of the the axis on the x-axis there so let's go to the modifiers add a mirror modifier and x is the default which is what we want and let's turn on clipping so that our object doesn't intersect itself in the, in the middle so that's what happens if you don't put clipping on but if we do you can kind of got that stickiness in the middle there which is great which is exactly what we want so let's just collapse that and head back to vertex mode We're going to work on this end. So you've got this extrusion that's going to go out, and it's a, it's a curve, it's a dip, 
and then you get the the base of the the head effectively which is that vertical rectangle you can see just to the left of the of the, where we are there so let's extrude that face twice so we've got that roughly in place and this is approximate by the way you don't have to follow the, the sketch exactly i mean this is quite a basic shape to be fair there's a lot more i could have done with this like rounded off some of the the head corners into more like a traditional hammer look so then that looks really cool but i didn't want to do that i want to keep it fairly simple um and quite blocky in some ways once we've done that, obviously we need to have uh, some more loop cuts in the middle there. So Control R, hover over that middle area until you get the vertical line. Click once to uh, you know, create a line. Right click is to basically escape and leave the, the loop cut you've just created in the center. So right click and it leaves it in the middle. And we just press S for scale and bring those down to something like that. And because we've got the mirror modifier, we've now got that on both sides. And that's looking pretty cool. Um, now you could leave it square if you want it to be square but uh, I envisage the both ends to be circular like a cylinder shape so we'll figure out how to um, create those ends into cylinders in a minute but firstly some housekeeping just drag the cube outside of the scene the collection there default one rename it to head base or whatever you like just so you get a bit more organized because there will be quite a lot of objects uh, we'll be creating um, in this tutorial. So now we're going to add a round cube, which is um, you get that option. If you don't see that option, go back to the beginning of the video and check out the, the add ons that we need to enable. You don't need to use the add on, you could add a cube and apply, um, uh, you could just create a UV sphere to be fair, um, or create a cube and apply, say, a level 3 subdivision service modifier. And apply that modifier to the cube um, so anyway we added a round cube and we're going to select quad sphere um, we're going to turn down the detail a little bit i think six is looking good so we'll keep that and move that across switch to wireframe mode and scale it down again i'm doing this in object mode not edit mode so we will have to apply the scale in a moment. So the center of that sphere, we want to be aligned with the side or the facing face effectively of that hammerhead. We want to close that gap up obviously. So we can do that with some snapping. And by default, you're snapping. I mean, you can just eyeball it, just zoom in and out and just, you know, you can even intersect it through the, through that but my OCD doesn't let me do that, so uh, I like to snap it to the to the face or the vertex. So set it to vertex and leave it on closest, which should be its default. And then click the X, drag, and then with the snapping on, if you move your mouse pointer over any vertex, that will then snap to that vertex. And because we only click the red the red arrow or the red axis effectively, it's only going to snap it along that axis, which is what we want. We don't want to move the up and down or the in and out. So there you go. That's lovely and flush with the, uh, the hammerhead now. Let's leave that there for a bit. Switch back to wireframe mode. And let's reset the scale again. Back to 111, so control A. We'll go to the object menu at the top and select apply and then scale. Now it's up to you again, creative license. We want to perhaps not have it so spherical and have it a little bit more squashed like the sketch, but that's really up to you. You can leave it like, uh, like it is there. I think that still looks absolutely fine. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to use the 3D cursor as our scale point. But to do that, we need to put the um, 3D cursor at the active element or the in front of that, that face of the hammerhead. However, this seems to work, what I just did there, so we'll go with that. <laughs> and the next time you'll see me use the, uh, the 3D cursor um, for that purpose. 
sometimes um, these tools like when you set it back to medium point or not medium point active point active element it doesn't always work for me so you may have to fiddle around with some options there to get the, the desired result that you want or use the 3d cursor uh, it depends on whatever you want really you've got more than one way to uh, to get to the same result so let's select that right click and select shade smooth so it looks quite nice if we do that to the hammerhead it looks terrible because it's just a cube some very basic geometry so for now let's leave that flat so we can have something nicer to look at so what I've just done there is press selected the um, the sphere and if you press the, the question mark or forward slash key on your keyboard that will frame the selected sorry my apologies that will set the object to local view meaning it's going to isolate that object and only that object or objects you've selected so you know you can just focus on one object without having everything else in the way so select the object and press the forward slash key on your keyboard to do that so what i'm going to do here is just fill in that space the hole in the back again no need to do this but i want a complete model so i will do that um so select that curve the edge should I say going all the way around you can hold down the alt key and click it with the left mouse button and then once you've done that press the F key to create a face which we've done there and with that selected I'm gonna hover over to the uh, the bevel tool select the curve uh, the edge again go to the bevel tool set the shape to one and segments to two and what that's gonna do is just gonna create an inset a bevel around that edge without actually giving it that rounded edge the reason we're doing that is because obviously we're going to apply a subdivision surface modifier so those additional edge loops will, will, will help to support that shape um, as when we add the modifier and then select that face and hit I to inset and that will create an additional supporting um, geometry just to make sure that we get the shape that we want and that's it simple as that so bevel very simple and then inset that face and that's looking great now let's turn our attention to uh, the spike now you could create the cone where the obviously it's going to be created at the, the 3D cursor location you could move that across or the reason I didn't move it across is because it's in the center of the hammerhead which is exactly where we want, want it to be then we know the in this case the cone is going to be centered on the other side of the hammer so we just rotate that on the uh, Y axis by 90 degrees you could press R, Y then 90 or you could also use the side menu just on the side there if you don't see that menu just press the N key N for November and that will toggle the menu in and out visibility wise so let's move the cone over and position it roughly where we want it and like the other opposite side we'll, we'll, we'll snap that to the uh, to the facing edge of the the hammerhead In fact, uh, to be honest, I did make a mistake here because I shouldn't have used a cone. Um, I should have actually used the cube and taken one end of the cube and just scaled it down really small into a into a point, um, basically. So, but we'll fix that um, later on. So it's, it's a very simple shape to work with, so we can easily recreate that without any any problems at all. So here's the gap. Um, we want to snap that. So in the top right there you can see this options menu and you can click and check origins. Now the transformations you make will only affect the origin of the object and because we've got snapping turned on to uh, set to vertex if we hold down we can invoke the snapping by holding down the, the control key when you do that transformation of the object. So make sure you turn off um, the axis, uh, the pivot. A modification in the options menu there 
and go back to object mode and move it to the left hold the control key and it will snap when you move your mouse over any nearby vertices so with that done we switch to wireframe mode um, vertex mode and select those end vertices and just scale them down to a more pointy shape and that's looking pretty cool you can see my sketch was slightly off um, horizontally but that's fine it's just, it's just a sketch uh, concept idea and again I'm going to fill the back there so we'll select that curve or the edge I keep calling it a curve it's edge loop and we'll press F to create a face select the bevel tool again or you can press ctrl B that will also bevel with the same settings again segments 2 shape 1 and we'll just get those support and edge loops added next to that initial edge loop I think for now that's good enough we can always come back to that later on in fact we will come back to that later on as I say I made a mistake there so um, don't be afraid to go back and delete something and, and start over on one object So as I said, if you're not comfortable, you dive in into the more intermediate, would I, not even that really, um, intermediate editing. You can leave that as, as a cube like this. That's absolutely fine. But in this instance, I want this to be rounded on this end and keep the center part of the hammerhead square. So we can use the add-on loop tools to achieve that. So but to do that, we need more geometry to work with because there's not, you can't round off, you know, four-sided cube. Um, so we'll add some edge loops by hitting Ctrl R and add three cuts along each axis. And then select the loop cut by clicking Alt left click and then right click to select loop tools and select circle. Now that might look like a mess and that's absolutely fine but it's doing what we want so let's continue that with the next set of uh, next edge loop. So select that again left uh, Alt left click select and right click loop tools circle do that for those so we get that nice uh, that, I guess uh, dip, dip dip that's the word I'm looking for and we'll do that to the front of the hammer as well now we can't select an edge loop there because of the uh, just because really I don't know any of the reasons why but uh, hold down shift and select the additional ones and apply the loop tools again and there you go now you've got this lovely circular head on both sides which just looks really cool but we need to make some adjustments because it's not shallow enough and once we apply you know once we roughly uh, smooth this whole thing over with the subdivision modifier that dip is not going to be as pronounced so we need to exaggerate that some more it's also too big I mean you could leave it again you can leave it like that it's totally up to you now, if we select all of these vertices and scale them um, don't forget to be in wireframe mode for this otherwise you won't select all of the vertices at the back if we select that and scale it we're scaling it in all of the axis but we don't want to scale it in the X axis so when you press the S key press then, then press shift X and that will exclude the X axis and that will enable you to do that quite easily so S for scale shift X or any other corresponding axis X, Y, or Z to, to leave out to not affect that axis that's looking better now I think we still need more edge loops here so we'll add one Control R click in there right click to leave it in the middle switch to edge mode it's already highlighted and then leave that there for now you can always come back and scale it quite easily later on so if we were to apply the smooth shading to this now you probably find that it will look better in some ways but not perfect make some minor adjustments to the shape um, whatever you like something like that is good and one more supporting edge loop there remember Control R to add an edge loop or use the tools on the side or where the toolbar is 
Yeah, the bell. Uh, oh, that, I forget what the name is now. The edge loop tool. So we just make some minor adjustments to space them out a little bit nicer. And uh, there you go. Now if we make that smooth, what happens? That's not looking too bad. Obviously the block in the center is very, um, it's not looking great, but none of it's looking great. So, but that's fine. We still need to add a little bit more geometry to this. We're going to do that with supported edge loops. So we're going to do a lot of bevels in all the key places just to strengthen those corners up. So we can select that with Alt, left mouse button, click, select, hold down shift and select, <coughs> excuse me, select these additional edges. And then shift, Alt, mouse click, select these as well. Let's try and do this in one go if we can. So they're the ones that we really want to make stronger you know, more sharp effectively hold their shape and uh, bevel tool again two segments shape set to one so we're adding two cuts along each side of those edges without rounding it off that will really help with the uh, subdivision surface modifier that's looking a lot better now that would work as a low polygon game object Quite nicely. Remember, we still have the mirror modifier applied, so that makes our, our job a lot easier. So do try to make use of these modifiers where you can. Switch to wireframe mode, and let's start working on this base. The clamp, I call it a clamp. It holds the the hammerhead in place, basically. Um, it's not very clear exactly how it's you know what it's meant to look like there because I've only got a side of sketch of it. But I envisaged it as a, a cube-like ring in the center with a, an extended base coming out from the bottom there just to give it a bit more strength and stability. So we also want to apply any rotation and scale to objects. So I just did that for the, um, the spike element and I'm just clicking through and making sure that everything looks is, is good as in the rotations are zero and the scale is set to one rename the, the spike the cone to head spike or whatever you like um, maybe create a collection and put those in there as well so let's let's think about this um, this clamp at, in the middle there so let's add a cube this time I'm going to switch to edit mode select everything by toggling the A key scale it down and then scale it in the x-axis roughly will do it's not a, an exact science it's just a made up hammer so you know, be creative do what you like and there's a lot more we can do with this we can add de a lot more detail to this but in this instance I wanted to keep it fairly straightforward um, there are some tricky parts to this I'm not gonna lie um, in fact I think I did the the clamp part probably five or six set times to get that right and find the best way to do it. Um, it's easy to miss edges when you're making selections, then you don't realize it afterwards and then you have to go back and fix things. Uh, it's not impossible, but it just makes it more difficult. So I did it again and again until I got the process down. So that's what I'll be showing you today. So what we've done there is the same thing as we did with the hammerhead cube. We added a loop cut down the middle, and then selected the right hand side of it or one side of it deleted those faces and added a mirror modifier remember to turn the clipping on so it doesn't break apart in the middle now we want you could again you could leave this as is nothing wrong with that but i want this to be physically correct so there should be a hole in that square ring so i selected that face and pressed the i key for inset and we're going to make that just a little bit larger than the uh, the hammerhead it's not an exact science, do whatever you feel looks good. So we don't need that face, so with that selected, we can uh, delete it. Now, we can't see anything once we've done that, so we're gonna turn off the, uh, the hammerhead in a second and start working on that clamp. Let's just rename that first. And select the head base, the head hammer, and turn it off with the eye icon. Now that's hidden. 
Now we can work just on the on the clamp a lot easier. So let's select these edges here. Press E to extrude, which goes in any way you like. But if you then press the X key, that will lock the extrusion along the X axis and it will snap into the middle because of the mirror modifier. So just drag it to the left, to the right. <coughs> Excuse me. And that, that's, 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 that's pretty much it. However, the bottom part does have this extended part. So Control R, add two loop cuts, use your mouse wheel to scroll and increase or decrease the number of cuts you want to make. I've made two there. Now we can extrude the faces there in the middle, but we don't want this, <coughs> excuse me, we don't want this angled faces. So we're gonna select these and we're gonna scale them in the Y axis, which is the, the green axis there. But rather than using the scale tool, it's much, to get it perfectly vertically uh, scaled, uh, aligned, press S, Y, zero. And that way you've centered the scale to zero and that will make it perfectly straight. And you can see there we've got that, that face in the middle, flush there, which we can then ex uh, extrude by hitting the E key. We're using the extrude tool from the toolbar. Just drag that out about there. So there you go. Now this is very simple and we could leave it there. Uh, and in fact the sketch pretty much just leaves it there. Um, but I went, went a, bit, a bit extra once I did this. I started to add these um, kind of detail extrusions uh, halfway up and across the you know, the clamp. Just gave it a bit more character, I felt. So the reason mine might look different to yours is because I've got cavity turned on and I've got both selected under the type. You can also turn on shadow and things like that. But that gives you that highlight on the, on the edges and the kind of ambient occlusion almost. Um, where these surfaces are close to each other. So let's think about what we can do next. Um, just remember to save your work and hit Control S every. You now, once you're happy with something, hit Control S. Now we're doing the same thing as we did at the bottom there. Add two loop cuts. We want to flatten those lines. So select all those vertices in wireframe mode. I forgot to do the other side, so I'll just add two loop cuts there. You could uh, actually delete the other side of the cube of that clamp as well and turn on the Y axis on the mirror modifier. And that would just save you having to do the other side as well. So select those vertices and then press S, Z, zero. That will make sure they're perfectly um, flat now, like that. Now that's looking good. And uh, if you remember from the, the video at the beginning of the hammer, we're going to select these faces for now and make them a little bit s s you know, smaller in the height because we don't want it that big. So select them, press S, Z, just pull them down. Make them as big as you like. And we select these faces here and extrude those by pressing the E key and X to extrude along the X axis or the normal, depending on which setting you want to use. And that's fine, again, we could leave it like that. That's pretty chunky and looks cool. But uh, I think it looked better, well, they look better when they're pointed. We're also gonna do that at the top, so do the same, print, uh, the same process again, add two loop cuts, Control R, use your mouse wheel to add or decrease the number of cuts. Select the loop cuts, Alt left, left mouse button, and we'll press S, Y, zero. Same for the other one, S for scale, Y axis, zero. Perfect. And of course, that's the same size as the one at the bottom. So we'll select those and just scale them in like we did with the vertical ones. It doesn't have to be exact. It's an exact size because ultimately this is uh, something that was made by hand, you know, effectively. So uh, yeah, a bit of deviation is good. And please do, yes, as the, uh, the thing just came up there, 
please do subscribe and like this video if you like this kind of content. I've, got, I've only just started out doing this, so your support is really appreciated. So let's go back to this uh, clamp, select that face, and we're going to extrude it. And remember, we've got the, the snapping set to vertex, so hold down the control key as you extrude it and move your mouse over one of the vertices that you want it to align with. And there you go. Now we're going to select these standing edges there and just scale them down into a point. Don't make it very small though because you'll have problems if you do that. As you'll probably see later on, it gets a bit fiddly. So we'll select these and scale them down in the Z axis. You could just press SY, but I'm using the, uh, the tool, the visual tool there from the toolbar. And there you go, that's looking pretty cool. If you wanted an in-game object, that's as, that's as basic as it gets. Um, you'd probably make those pointy actually if it was an in-game object, but this is not what this is for. So you know, I'm not worried about polygon count. So we want to add, you know, nothing in life is perfectly sharp, you know, or you know, even a razor edge is not perfectly sharp. Um, so we want to add a subdivision service modifier to get some nice highlights on edges and things. But if you do that, this is what happens. It just becomes a, a blobby mess. So that's why supporting edge loops is so important. So even though we've got a very basic shape there, we've now got this rounded off and softened object, which is clearly what, what we don't want. So this is the bit that I, I, I did a few times to find the best way to do it. Um, but I tried to find the best way possible for you guys to not suffer the way that I did. So I selected everything there apart from the inner edge loop. And with that, you can add a bevel again, like we did with the other ones, like previously. So back to the bevel tool. Segments is two, shape is one again. And just, now we want to be careful here because these pointy bits, we don't want the geometry to overlap. So we'll do it roughly there. And we can always come back and scale those facing faces uh, a bit more later on if we need to. But we really need these supporting edge loops, otherwise the subdiv modifier would just not work for us. So there you go. And we'll apply that back again. And it didn't actually change visually, which is great because that's exactly what we want. But everything is just a lot smoother now. And all these edges are rounded off by the subdivision modifier. So when you add lighting and render it, you get these lovely highlights catching on the edges. And there's a problem, as I said, if you make that, if you, you know, if you put the bevel too far, they could overlap and I almost overlapped it there. So I want to select these faces and I just turn the modifier off there. And I'm pressing S for scale along the Y axis, but it's not actually working. So, I thought it might be in the mirror modifier, but it wasn't, so we'll select that edge itself and use the move, move tool. We'll bring that over there. And we'll select these additional faces on the other side and just move them across there. So you're getting roughly a third of the way across there. Doesn't it? Again, it's not an exact science. This is handmade, a handmade object. You know, beaten over an, over an anvil with another hammer. So we'll select, we'll do the same now, just um, space these out a little bit better. So select these edges, and now we can hit the S key, and then Z for up and down, or the, up, no, the Z axis. And we'll just bring those out about there. That's good enough. And because we want these to be a little bit more pointy, we can select these in, in uh, middle faces here, just at the front. And just move them out a little bit more. So it's probably best to go to the side view for this or zoom in so you can see a bit of a profile. Let's turn that back on 
subdivision modifier back on so you can see the effect you can see what we're going for here it rounds that 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 point off nicely so again you don't have those really sharp edges which don't catch any highlights our rotation and scale values are looking good everything's looking good so that's uh, fantastic and we'll add a subdivision modifier to the hammerhead as well that's looking much nicer now do the same for the the, the, the bulbous end there subdivision modifier viewports to render to obviously if you have a a, a PC that can't handle uh, you know, obviously the more levels you add in the viewport the slower and the longer it would take for blender to to redraw the screen so you can always add one level of the viewport or check it with two and just turn it back down to one again so your viewport doesn't slow down as much now this is the bit i mentioned earlier where i used the cone and for that reason you know, the modifier is doing its job and it's just rounding off the whole thing which looks terrible um and we could just work with that but I think I tried to either delete this and add a cube or we can just cut the tip off, the pointy tip off with the knife tool. So at this point I don't think I realised my mistake so I selected these edges thinking yeah I just bevel them how we did before and that will help us with the, uh, the, bevel, uh, the subdivision modifier. And this, these things will happen as, you know, as trial and error. You do take things for granted and you just go ahead and think yep that's a cone i just throw in a cone then you realize afterwards whoops that wasn't quite what i wanted so you have to go back and redo it just deleted that edge loop going around there i'm selecting these outer ones and i'm going to bevel them thinking that's going to fix everything but look at that point, it looks terrible. That looks better. I think at this stage I'm thinking, yep, yeah, we've uh, fixed it, but uh, let's turn the modifier off again. Select this edge loop, left, alt, key, and then left, mouse button to select it press F for a face to create a face I to inset and now we've got overlapping geometry in the corners so not good I'm changing some of the properties there for the inset face but it doesn't seem to fix it so there's no clamp overlap so um, just make this, the, uh, the inset a little bit smaller Turn the modifier back on and whoops, that's not what I expected. I've got these corners pinching quite badly. Which won't do. So as you can tell, I was making a bit of uh, a fuss with this. To be fair, this is fixable. But um, the fact that I just used the pointy cone shape didn't help at all. So we'll see what we do in a second. I think it's important to see these mistakes as well. I could have just edited this out, but um, this is the process of creation of creating something. So the mistakes will be made, but that's fine. That's how we learn. I think my brain is ticking away there, and thought, nope no more use a cube <laughs> so there we go finally a cube we'll add that so just catch up really you know, just you know what to expect now just uh, scale down the cube i've done that in edit mode and we'll select that face and we'll snap it to the uh to the face there so again Click on the X axis, hold down Control, and move your mouse pointer at the nearest uh, vertex or vertice. Let's 
there we go it's easier to see that without the modifiers turned on so I turned it off on the hammerhead modifier and uh, that gives us a cleaner model to a simpler model to snap to so that's 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 where it should be now let's scale it down again and that's totally screwed up the uh, the flush object so let's uh, select the front face move that out to roughly where the point is scale it in once it gets hard to scale in just commit it and then press s again uh, a tip though don't keep you don't move your mouse don't leave your mouse pointer near the selected object or the center of the object and you press things like rotate or scale because the the increments become so much more exaggerated it becomes difficult to control so the further away your pointer is the finer you uh, experience you'll have with scaling and rotating and if you want finer control still hold down the shift key as you're doing those operations that will make it much more refined so with that done I've deleted the back face again I'm just going to select these edges in fact all of them apart from the back ones in fact did I say that twice probably did right so we've got all those edges selected apart from the back ones and um, we're going to bevel those with the lovely bevel tool you can also press ctrl b and enter the same values as at the top there segments to shape one there you go brilliant shade that smooth and that looks good subdivision service modifier put the levels to two and that's looking great the other thing I didn't like, um, which I will we'll come to in a second, is I didn't really want those corners to be so sharp. The point of it, yes, but not the further away from the point. I wanted it to be, to be a little bit softer. Now we have that pinching again because when I added the, uh, the the face at the back there with the F key and then inset it, we've got the same problem. But you know, it's all fixable, so we'll just fix that here. Add a supporting edge loop, Control R, click and drag it, and then click to commit. We'll click and do the same thing again, click it, drag it, and add one about there just to help support that front part. Select that middle face and pull it out just like we did with the, uh, the clamp, and that will round off that point, make it a little bit more pointy. Something like that is good. Great. You definitely wouldn't want to be hit on that with that. Let's turn the modifier back on for that one. And that's looking really cool. Nice shape to work with. I think in my sketch actually the uh, the cone, the spike part was actually rotated 90 degrees in the um, X axis, but. Uh, I forgot to do that. Doesn't really matter. Now this is cool. If you turn on Madcap and then switch to this lovely red metallic thing, this is a good way for you to check your model and see if there's any bits that look weird. You know, when you look at a car, like a car paint, if there was a dent in it or some sort of glitch, effectively, you'd notice it because it's shiny. So I switched to that just to see how it looks under that kind of material and lighting. It really does help to highlight any problems. That looks good, so I'll continue ahead and uh, create a new collection. Call it whatever you like, I've called it Hammer. We're going to select all of these objects and drop, drag and drop them into the Hammer collection. So if we turn this box on and off, we can quickly hide everything in the Hammer collection, which is a great little feature. So let's work on the rest of it now, and we'll start off with a, a popular cylinder. Uh, 16 size is good we will be adding a subdivision service modifier of course let's work on this top part here this little uh, I don't know what it is end cap or something I'm scaling that in the uh, z-axis again this is in edit mode not object mode so I shouldn't have to apply the scale we want to again scale this but not in the z so pressing S and then shift Z or Z uh, and that will exclude that axis. 
and we have a gap so we'll just close that up use the snapping tools again so set to its vertex not center not center because that will center the object <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there it should be closest sometimes you will need to set it to um, center it will work just go, go try again snapping can be sometimes a little bit nonsensical but we got there in the end that's all that matters so that's looking good let's shade it smooth and again we got this horrible shading because there's just not enough geometry for the shading to work properly so as we did with the, the everything else actually we'll select the uh, the edge loops running around the top and the bottom and we'll use our bevel tool to create some supporting edge loops I'm going to keep these fairly tight so we get that nice rounded sharp edge and you can also create some, a couple of insets top and bottom if you really wanted to and that's looking much much better not perfect but it's good enough at this point I think in some cases I added more edge loops like here so control R click right click leave it in the middle and that will just help out um, so with supporting the shape and the shading select the top and bottom face press I to inset now you've got a much cleaner shading model going on and that's perfect that's all we need let's rename that So again, rotation and scale are all set to 0 and 1, which is what we want because we worked in edit mode, not object mode. And what I've done there is I've copied the object. Um, I, don't, I can't remember if I duplicated that or created an instance. If you want to make a copy of it, independent copy, then use Shift D. If you want an instance of the object, use Alt D. So when you do that, it will stick to your mouse cursor, which is why you saw me wiggling it around. Just right click and that will snap it back to where you created it. Then move them down on the Z axis. Let's create another cylinder. Again, 16 sides. Bring that down, switch to wireframe mode so you can see the rest of our geometry. And we'll scale that down in edit mode. A scale S shift Z so we don't scale it on the Z axis I don't know whether I should say Z or Z I'm saying Z because I was born and raised in the UK so uh, that's how we say it on this side of the pond and we'll just use the snapping again the vertex snapping to make sure that's nice and flush again remember control hold down the control key um, after you've done that so that was but well, once you're doing that that will make it snap Whoa, <laughs> can you figure out why it's doing that? Yeah, because we've got faces at the top and bottom, so it's trying to smooth them out as well. Now I can't get to that top face, so with that one selected, I'll delete it. And you can use X-ray mode or Y-frame mode. I've just clicked there through the top of the other object and selected it, so there you go. Y-frame mode, you can see that much, much easier now. And there you go. That's looking really tidy. Great. So we can copy that. Now you could argue that you could just use one cylinder for this, for both parts. Um, but I didn't. So I could have done. In fact, in hindsight, I didn't really need two either, I don't think. Let's just rename these so to something a bit more sensible than cylinder. Bring that one down. Let's switch to vertex mode, wireframe, or x-ray, either or. As long as you can select through the object to select all the vertices. And again, we're going to snap these two. So click the blue icon, uh, the blue axis. 
hold down control and that will snap them to wherever your mouse pointer hovers over. Let's turn X-Ray off, go back to object mode, which you can toggle between edit and object mode with the tab key. And I really do encourage you to use the shortcuts because they make this a lot quicker than just using the menus. It's good to know the menus, but the keyboard shortcuts are infinitely faster. So working on the, the bottom of the, the handle now, I've copied the, the head sphere I moved it down and we're going to rotate that around the y-axis so we want to snap this by 90 no, degrees of 5 which is what blender does um, so we get that nine, minus 90 degrees rotation you can do that by holding down the control key as you rotate the object and that will snap it with into five degree increments so lots of snapping involved here which is a good thing to be to get to know that you're very useful. Right, let's uh, scale this down because it's way too big. But I wanted to scale around that point, which is the active element, i.e. Its, orig its own origin point. I don't find this always works for some reason, but in this instance it did. Now, we did rotate that by ni minus 90 degrees in the y-axis, as you can see there in the side menu under transform. And you could leave it like that, absolutely fine. Or you can reset the, uh, apply the rotation. So let's start working on these little uh, extrusions. Um, now that, that thing you can see on the side there in the sketch is just a bit of visual interest really, it adds a bit more to the model. It's some sort of uh, attachment where, you know, these spikes have been added and they can be taken off and replaced with something else. I don't know. Use your imagination. It could be anything you like. So we'll bring these down. Now the cylinder I created is, isn't as high. It hasn't got 16 sides basically because it's much smaller. We want to try and maintain the density of the model, as they say. So here I've clicked uh, the side view, of course, the front view and then rotated it and then hold down the control key so we get the the snapping of the rotation so it's exactly 90 degrees and we're going to apply the rotation and the scale again control a same thing there you go but you can do rotation and scale at the same time win-win for the mate for the short keyboard shortcuts now this one's going to be not so flush because you can't make it flush against a circular object um, surface so I put that to center let's see what happens I want to get the snap vertically set in the middle of that object uh, again I could just eyeball this but um, I didn't so that's good enough I want to select that front face only and just bring that in about there and of course we don't need the back face because it's hidden inside the, the the other cylinder there so we'll just bring that in a little bit more to make sure we're safely inside there and then delete that that face same process again add, this, add a subdivision modifier and now we've got a, a sphere and of course the back of the sphere sorry the back of the cylinder has that face so we've still got that selected. So pressing the forward slash key, let's put it into isolation mode and so we can see the, uh, the face at the back and delete that face. And select these edges on the front and bevel those. That's going to again support the subdivision modifier. Let's turn that back on and there you have it. I think what I'll do is add another uh, edge loop with Control R. And with that done, let's just rename this.
So our scale and rotation are at their default values. Just check in there and let's place that down there. I'm trying to snap it to the center, but because we've got closest on instead, it won't do that. So I switch it to center and then back to closest. I think that's looking cool. And I think now we can start working on the um, that kind of tube thing here. There's probably many ways you can do this by creating a cylinder, adding edge loops, subdividing it and then rotating it or bending it should I say um, at some point along that cylinder. But we can just use a torus and if we delete three quarters of that torus we'll end up with a corner effectively as a circle so I think we'll try that and see how that goes. So I'm trying to put it the origin point there so that when we make this smaller like that it would fall into approximately the right place. So just some minor adjustments now to the uh, to the torus. It's probably too detailed at this point, so I might just turn those uh, segments down a little bit. I mean, anything like this actually is pretty good, so I'm probably a little bit overkill on the, on this part. I'm just looking at the width of that that pipe there. I shouldn't call it a pipe, the bar. That's about right. Let's go with that. Shade smooth. And now we can switch to edit mode. And in, you can either switch to wireframe mode, as I've done, or go to uh, turn the X-ray on. We want to select this half, and then the lower half. So I'll hold down shift and then click and drag. We want to delete these vertices so we end up with just this one here. This section. I think you can guess what we're going to do next. So alt left click the, the edge and E to extrude. X for the X axis and just bring it through there. At this point I held down control to snap to that to that bolt thing there, but you don't have to do that, you can just intersect it if you want to. So again, select the other edge loop, E to extrude, press Z for the Z axis, and bring that down. Now we've got the first half of that, we don't have to recreate it. We can just duplicate that and rotate it around. So I'm just going to move that approximately to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. It can just be something that is close enough to, to what you want. So let's just apply the rotation. So that any parameters we add to this, any modifiers we add, will behave correctly. And we're going to change that to the z-axis and it, it looks quite kind of funky right now because of the uh, the origin point is obviously where we created it so we need to bring that down quite a bit so with the options there select origins only closest is the snapping option and we can drag that hold down control move our mouse in your vertex and it will snap that there lovely turn that back off now when we turn the mirror modifier on, we can see it's perfectly mirrored along its uh, z-axis. However, it's a little bit short. And you could reorientate the, um, reposition the, uh, the axis here, or the origin point I should say. But uh, it, I don't think it's really worth it. I'd probably just apply the mirror modifier at this point and select the lower half of that, of that pipe or tube and just place it 
here at this point. So let's try the uh, origin point first. Snap it there. Still not quite there. So we could do that again. Like I say, it's probably not worth it. Let's turn the origins off. Apply the mirror modifier. And go into edit mode. Select that lower half and just drag it down so it's roughly in place. Just eyeball it, that's, that's good enough. Absolutely fine. Now we don't need that center uh, edge loop running through the middle of that pipe or tube. So you could just delete that or leave it up to you. Doesn't make much of a difference really. So what I've done there is made the face selection, uh, a face loop selection. I have shift D to copy it and then P to separate it into its own object. So we've now got the those faces from that from that that, that tour respectively. Um, and we're gonna create the another attachment, another part to that area using that same geometry. Remember to borrow from other existing geometry if you if you can. It makes it a little bit easier to, to move to the next step. So there's our duplicated faces. Of course they're very thin right now. So we'll scale these up. But we don't want to scale it in the Z axis, so press Shift Z. I keep saying Z or Z, but you get what I mean. So scale, S for scale, Shift Z to not scale on the Z axis. And that'll just make it fatter effectively. Let's apply the scale on that just to make sure everything's good. And this time we're going to apply a solidify modifier, which will give it some thickness. Let's just make that a little bit thicker. About there is good. And we can apply that because we don't really need to, to keep that non destructive. So in edit mode, I'm just going to scale these down in the Z axis and move it up. These are going to act as little, little clamps really that the additional part is, is attached to. And this is very blocky of course, so as before we're going to add a uh, subdivision surface modifier which of course make it look very weird and uh, in edit mode we'll go in and add some more bevels to these edges so switch to edge mode alt left click select a few of the edge loops because we want the same we might as well do it all in one go there we go you could you can press ctrl b or use the uh, the bevel tool from the toolbar That's better. Perhaps a little bit blocky, but for the relative size to the other parts of the hammer, you could probably get away with one subdivision surface level. Uh, by all means, feel free to put it to two if you so wish. So let's copy that, bring it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Great, that's looking good. Let's just rename those to bar clamp two. Now with that done, we're gonna work on that extra attachment. And we're gonna use a cylinder for that. So 16 vertices is, is fine for now. Let's make that a little bit, a bit smaller.
No, I want the, the, uh, the, the radius of that to flow around the main bar. So that's why I've made it wider, as you can see there. So it's got a nice bit of thickness to it. Switch to wireframe mode. Back to solid. And what we're going to do now is switch to or not to face mode. There we go. Just going to select that top face and the bottom face and delete that. So with that edge, re edge loop selected, we're going to extrude, E to extrude. Make sure you're on medium point and S for scale. And bring that down so it's fairly snug around the, uh, the clamps we just made. Something like that is fine. Now I'm not going to worry about doing both sides at this point. Let's just delete these vertices there. Let's add a mirror modifier to the Z axis. Clipping turned on of course, so they stick together in the middle. And we only need one half of this cylinder. So having done all that, we're probably going to delete quite a bit of it as well. So switching to wireframe mode, vertice, vertice mode, select the left side and delete those vertices. There you go. Now we just need to fill in the, the gaps we created. Now in hindsight, this could have been done in a much better way. But here we are, let's just go with this. And we're going to select that edge. I think I realized at this point that uh, I should have just applied the mirror body line anyway. So anyway, let's go back to these edges. Remove that one with control delete, which is a dissolve edge. A dissolve delete. So select those edges and press F to fill it with a face. Now we just need to do the inside of that cylinder, which is hidden by the, uh, the hammer. So we'll select this edge loop here, apart from these two sides. And with those top and end selected, we can right click and bridge edge loops. And that gives us the shape we want. And this is probably a long way of doing this. There's a much better way of doing this, but that's just how I went along with it, how I found it. Now the trick to this part is there needs to be a central like recess where these spike things are sticking out from. Um, now that's going to be quite tricky, especially when we add the subdivision modifier. Um, it, it, it will literally visually break the uh, the aesthetic. So we'll add a few loop cuts for now, and that's going to be the, the space that we want this this um, indent to be. So we select these faces. Perhaps a bit wider. Something like that. Maybe that's too wide. But that's fine. Let's press I for inset. That will give us a few more supporting edge loops around that cavity that we're going to create in a second. So we're going to select extrude. Along normals. And just bring those in. Something like that is good. We'll undo that. Let's insert that again. I opted not to do extrude the long normals. Just go for a straight extrusion, the standard extrusion along the uh, x-axis so effectively effectively these faces won't shrink as they as they're extruded along the normals whereas this way they keep the, the same the same width 
Let's add another loop cut in the middle with Control R. Back to wireframe mode, vertex mode. Select the bottom half and delete that. And switch to solid mode. Let's apply the mirror modifier on the Z axis. Turn clipping on. And right click and shade smooth. <coughs> Excuse me. So with the subdivision modifier applied, you can see it does look really weird now. But as always, you know what we're going to do, we're going to add some more supporting edge loops. Now the tricky part isn't the top and bottom or the edges, it's the uh, the hole we've just made in the center. So have a think about this and see how we're going to uh, get this to work. Let's start by adding one here, so we tighten up that top part, and we'll click and drag, Control R to add an edge loop, click to place it and then drag to select, undo that. Let's just think about this some more. So what I've done now is just deleted the other half. Again, we don't need to model both because I've, I realized I want to get this precise as possible. So we'll just mirror it on the Y axis as well. So we can only do one half now and that's much easier to work with. Again, having to think about how this is going to work. We'll place one there as well, just to uh, add more supporting edge loops. Just move that up a little bit. And we only want to move these edges in some more towards the corner. So just with those selected, we can press GG, so G twice, to, and that will slide those edges along. Now the reason we don't want to move all of them is because if we tighten up the, edge, the vertices and the edges at the top, that will make a much sharper um, profile to the to the half sphere, which we don't want. We want it to be as circular as possible at the top, but maintain the tightness in that recess. So it's a little bit tricky this part. So that's not looking too bad, that's working quite well. But you can see there we've got this kind of harder edge area. And that's because we've added another edge loop, which obviously goes to the top. But for now, let's tighten up these uh, edges. So Control R to add a edge loop and click and drag to place them. And one more on this side. That's much better. It's not looking bad. Still a bit of a glitch with the shading there. Now you could just leave it at that guys, it's not a problem especially as it's man-made, you know, by hand. So it's not really an issue. Um, switching the matte cap, glossy red, we can see how that's, how that's looking. That's not too shabby. Now let's think about these spikes that we can put into this re into these holes that we've just made there. So let's add a cube. Switch to wireframe mode, place it roughly where we want it. And we'll scale this down. To something like that. Now I'm going to try to add three of these in the in this recess. So you want to make sure it's approximately a third um, of that height. Give it a little bit of breathing space. Again, think about this as a man-made object. So it's not, not going to be perfect. It's not machine tooled. It's you know it's all made by hand with a uh, you know the uh, beating the the metal. You 
can see I scaled that in the, ob in the object mode. So let's apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A. Let's go into edit mode now, select this front face and just scale it down so it becomes more of a point. Something like that is fine. Probably move it out a little bit more so you get a bit more of a spike. Okay. And you can see that we're not, we're not, you know, we're being careful not to intersect into that top part there. So let's bring that out a bit now because we want to see a bit more of a bulk to this. So let's select that bottom face, extrude that out. Somewhere about there. That gives it a nice base to work from and then it goes into the point. That's looking good. Again, let's add the, uh, not subdivision just yet, let's add an array modifier. We want that to be obviously duplicated on the z-axis so we can turn the um, factor to zero, x factor to zero and the z-axis to one. In this case minus one because we want it to go downwards. And let's give it a bit of an offset because at the moment they're right up against each other. Let's increase that a little bit more, give it a bit more of a gap. And that's looking okay. If you find that the gap is too big, you can just edit the cube. And of course, if you edit the one cube, it's going to edit. Um, those changes will propagate through to the other uh, spikes. So if I make this a little bit taller now. And the Z axis, because you can see the other ones will, will take on the, that scale as well. And with that done, I can move that down a little bit. Close the gap up a touch. And bring it down just so it's not intersecting with the, uh, the part there. Close that gap up a little bit more. At this point, just to eyeball it, again, it's, it's, I'm, I'm probably going a little bit too fiddly here, too specific, but that's fine. That's looking good. We're getting some interesting shapes now working together, which is what we want. Now let's add a subdivision surface modifier and they become very pointy now, but quite rough. Let's uh, shade smooth, right click and select shade smooth. In the edit mode, we're going to add some supporting edge loops to these. We don't need the back faces, so let's delete that, those, or that one should I say. There we go. Then we have these bullet shapes. Let's think about how we're going to do this. We could select all of the edges and bevel these. So we're selecting all the edges apart from the back ones and we'll use the bevel tool. Again, segments two, shape one. Just give that a bit of a bevel. Keep an eye on the pointy part so you can see what it's divided into nine faces now. It, you want to get that roughly the same size with those nine at the front. And that should be enough actually. Now we can probably get away with one subdivision surface uh, level. So let's pick that very first face at the front there and pull it out a little bit. That'll give us a bit of a pointier spike. Not pin sharp of course, but it's good enough. So now I'm thinking that I really don't want these um, the opposite edges to the spike to the pointy part. I don't want them as near the edge. I don't want the edge as sharp as the pointy part. So I'm just going to select these edges and scale them in the y-axis initially. Let's just select some more there. 
and scale these in a little bit. That would make these a little bit more rounded off at the back. Doesn't have to be as sharp as the front part. It's kind of how you expect it to be if someone were to make this. So let's do the same on the side. Select those and scale them in on the z-axis this time. In hindsight I should have done the other side at the same time. Opposite sides at the same time. But again, this is handmade. It doesn't have to be perfectly uh, accurate. So finally we do the other side. Just like that. And I think that's fine. So it's a bit softer at the back and more pointy and sharp at the front. Let's turn the array back on and that's looking pretty good. Switch to Madcap and just see how that looks now. You can turn this little icon off and that will get rid of any overlays so you get less distraction as you inspect your model. I think that's, really, that's looking really cool. Of course, feel free to do whatever you want. Add more spikes or uh, other parts to the, uh, to the hammer to make it your own. This is just a guide, really. This is just something that I sketched out, as you saw. So, um, and it doesn't always follow the sketch either. So, uh, there you go. Let's rename these. So, these cubes are spikes. And the cylinder let's call that handle guard whatever that means and save it control less to save now let's think about these uh, bolts or nuts that add a bit more integrity and strength to the hammer and also just look really cool once you add these. Now 3D cursor is all the way there over there. So let's reset it back to the world origin. So shift S will bring up that menu and select cursor to world origin. Let's add a round cube. And then switch that to quad sphere. Possibly too much detail. Let's switch it down to about four maybe yeah that should be fine right click the shade smooth let's bring that up to approximately where we want to place our uh, these bolts switch to edit mode this time and scale it down that way we don't have to reset the scale so make it roughly the size of the other bolt that you want and put it in position. Obviously move it in object mode, not edit mode, otherwise your pivot will be off center. So looking at that now, that's obviously going through in the middle. You want to place that to the outside and you can probably visualize that better with the... I'm trying to snap it here because I've got the closest variable option on. Let's switch it to center. That will take the center of our object and snap it rather than the closest vertex of our object. So something like that. Again, you can just eyeball it. I'm just being pedantic with these uh, placements. Let's switch to wireframe mode. X-ray on. Um, you can see the intersection there. And we really don't need those faces at the back. So let's select as much as we need to just about there and remove those. That would save us a little, save us a little bit of geometry. Let's switch back to uh, solid mode without the X-ray on. Now these are very bulbous, but I left them like this for, for now. Gonna let's come back to these another time. Make these any shape that you like. They could be squares, they could be diamonds, uh, or flat circles, like cylinder shaped. Let's have a subdivision modifier. I think one level is enough. So let's switch that to make sure it's one for render and one for the viewport. 
We can switch to wireframe mode to see how much detail we're getting there. To turn off optimal display. Now, can you see the difference? Is there a big difference there? So what I'm looking for here is our, our step edges. So with that done, we're going to select these, uh, this, this front area, these front vertices. We're just going to scale these in, something like that. You could just scale it there as I've done and just move them to the right. However, I'm going to switch this over to Active Element, um, which didn't have the desired effect that I wanted. Though well, strangely it did before, so I wasn't quite I'm surprised it wouldn't work the way I expected it to. Let's put the cursor to the uh, to the origin of that object, and we'll use that as our scaling reference point. Switch it to 3D cursor, mm -hmm. and from there we can just scale it along the y-axis. So these aren't as bulbous and rounded as, as before. <clears throat> okay, that's looking fine. Let's go with that. And we can copy these, of course. So, with that done, let's move that one down. And feel free to place these anywhere you like, uh, and as many as you like. But do think about, you know, if this were actually made in the real world, how many of these would you need to add more, you know, stre strength and integrity to the to the hammer? So don't go too crazy, but. Uh, it's up to you, of course. Or well, that could be for decoration. I mean, that'd be, it would actually look quite nice if, they were, if one part of the hammer was completely filled with these bulbous shapes. That'd be quite interesting. So anyways, what I've done now is I've selected both, both of those and duplicated them and got into rotation mode and rotated them around the, around the Z-axis by 180 degrees. So I'm going to add a loop cut in that center part so I've got an, a center reference point when I'm snapping these later on. So let's duplicate one of those again. Let's turn snapping back to closest. Of course, let's bring that back to medium point so we can see our, our handle. And let's just move over. And that's not going to work because we need to be, the snapping tools need to be center, not closest. I'll probably realize that in a second. I haven't realized yet. There we go. Center. That will snap the center of our object, not the closest vertex. Excellent. Now we just need to rotate that on the z-axis again. But this time, 90 degrees, not the other side. So the 3D cursor is already at the world center which is zero and obviously we worked around that so we can just press r z 90 and that will make that rotate to that side lovely we can copy that and do the same thing again but this time 180 degrees so it's on the other side and now we've got this interesting arrangement of uh, of bolts or studs or whatever you want to call these let's switch that manipulation point back to medium point and we'll move that up and place some of these on the hammer clamp as well so we'll just snap that to you roughly there and bring it out of course something like that that's looking really nice so maybe a couple of more of these one at the top and one on the other side. And I think we'll call that a day. So we want, our cent we want it to rotate these studs around that point, that origin point. So let's add the, uh, let's move the 3D cursor to that origin point of the hammerhead and select this uh, stud, duplicate it, set our uh, manipulation point to the 3D world, 
and then press RX minus 90 or 90 whichever works for you there you go do the same again duplicate rotate on the X and I forgot to copy it so let's do that again There you go, I've just realized that I didn't, oh yeah, I, I rotated the one that was there before. So I took duplicate that and rotate it. And that's looking really nice. Now the handle part is a, bit, a little bit trickier, but not too bad. Um, you wanted this to be this could be anything, it could be just a, it could be a leather strap, it could be a wooden part or a metallic part. But I opted to use leather, something that looked like leather. Uh, and also I've never modelled something that looked like a leather strap, so I wanted to see how I could do that. So I did have a quick look on the internet and found an excellent solution. Unfortunately I can't remember what that video was. but. Um, Whoever that person was, thank you so much for sharing that technique with me or with everybody. So what I've done now is just add a single vertex. Not an object, just a single vertex which you can do. And with that vertex selected, we're going to press E to extrude it on the Z axis, bring that up. So now we've got just the one edge and two vertices like that and bring that over. This is important you do this in the edit mode because you want the origin point to be at the world origin or the center of that handle effectively. So that's just an edge and two vertices as, as we said. And that's going to be our leather. So how do we do that? Well with that you can add a screw modifier. You can see that creates a cylinder shape. We want that to screw vertically so increase the uh, the screw amount there so that's something like the effect we want but obviously it's not quite there yet that uh, increase the iterations so the co a combination of the the screw amount and the iterations will give you the look that you want ultimately so play around play around with these values until you get something that looks you know pretty good Don't worry that the um, <coughs> excuse me, the straps, as as it's going upward, is intersecting with itself. We're, we're going to fix that a bit later on. But for now, let's just get the approximate um, screw amount and placement. Now, because this is at this location, as it screws upwards, we're going to have a gap beneath. But before I fix that gap, what I've added there, I've selected the, um, the two vertices, right clicked and selected subdivide and that will create a new vertex in the middle, which I've dragged down. And we want to select these two and subdivide again. That will just be a supporting edge loop, an edge, of a vertex I, was, I should say. Select these two bottom ones, just pull them out a little bit. And that will give you the, effectively that's going to be the overlap of the, of the leather as it's wrapped around. And you can see the effect there works really well. And we've got a gap there. And it's overshooting at the top. So to fix that, we can bring down the hole. You know, in, again, in edit mode, select those vertices. Press, just toggle A key to select all and bring them down. So at the bottom of the handle there, the leather is looking full and complete. And we don't see it, no gaps. So just think about the top now. So again, work with the screw value and the iterations to get the effect that you want. So 
by very quickly editing these vertices you can get some really interesting results so we just overlap that a little bit because that's where the bump is that we've created how does it look around there yes yeah, that's almost coming out the other side we want to be careful we don't want that to go through and you can see there that hasn't quite looped around enough so we need to increase the iterations bring down the screw value it's a little bit fiddly but once you figure this out you, you'll get there We've got a bit more space to play with here, so maybe we can bring these up or scale it down a little bit more. As you can see, I'm going to scale these down in the Z axis. Something like that. And just review what you've just done and see if that's any holes anywhere. That's looking really cool. That's the effect that I'm after. Now we do have a gap there at the bottom. And you could use a, uh, a solidified modifier, but that's not really necessary because we don't want them to fill in the center part. We don't really need that. We can't see it. So what you can do is just edit mode. Select the vertices, one at the bottom, and just extrude it out. So you create a lip. So that one there, press E to extrude. X for the x-axis to keep it nice and level, bring it out about there, give it some thickness and then extrude that upwards. So now you can see there we've got this lip ha happening now. Let's see how that looks, that should work absolutely fine, like that. Yeah that's looking great, I'm happy with that. Let's make sure our face orientation, our normals are facing the right way. So come up and select that option. You can see there immediately our handle is red. Now I did make mine um, red in my options, in my, uh, op my settings. Yours may be a different color. But they, I think they should be red by default. So we're gonna flip the normals on that. And we can do that under the screw modifier in this case. Because we don't have real geometry there. It's not, we haven't baked, we haven't applied that, that modifier. So thankfully there was a flip option in the screw modifier, which fixed that problem for us. Let's turn that back off now. And let's switch to math cap mode and see how that's looking. And I think that looks really great. By all means, you know, add more to yours. Do what you feel looks good. This is just a guide, of course, and I hope you've learned something. Uh, in, the, in the upcoming videos, we'll think about texturing um, and maybe even UV unwrapping and texture painting. But uh, to start off with, we'll, we'll work with uh, procedural materials, which are a lot easier to work with. That part there should be to the side because you wouldn't be able to hold the hammer correctly because that would just be in the way. At least I think that's right. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. So, uh, yeah, so that's why I've rotated that 90 degrees to the other side. And with that, there you go. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.